Hello, my name is Catherine Leblanc and I'm a faculty lecturer at the Ingram School of Nursing from McGill University. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to insert an indwelling urinary catheter. Before starting the procedure, we want to make sure we identify our patient. So we're going to go into our patient's room, ask them for their name and date of birth, and verify it with the bracelet. We're also going to check for contraindications in the patient to get that procedure done, as well as any allergies the patient might have to the material that we're going to be using. So once this is done, we're going to gather our equipment. So we will need an indwelling urinary catheter, a drainage bag, a PK, a kit for urinary insertion with or without sterile gloves. Some kits have gloves and some kits don't. So it's always a good idea to bring an extra pair in case they get contaminated. Clean glove and hand sanitizer. So the next thing that needs to be done is perineal care. In our case, we're going to assume that the patient is autonomous and are able to perform it themselves. So once this is done, we can start setting up our environment. So we're going to uncover slightly the patient just to make sure we have enough room to work but wait at the last minute to expose the patient. Now we're gonna prepare our material. So the first one is the urine collection bag. So we're gonna take it out of its package, unwrap it. The tip that needs to be sterile has a cap on, so it is safe to leave it on the patient's bed. And the bag must be attached to a fixed part of the bed, so not on the side rail, and not on any part of the bed that moves. So it has to be on a fixed part and it has to be below bladder level here. So you want to put it close so it's easily accessible when we're at connecting it. Now, you want to make sure that you also have enough room on your um, table to open your sterile field. So we're going to get rid of extra equipment, perform hand hygiene, Make sure we have a disinfected table before we start preparing our equipment. Now, our sterile field, if we remember, we can never turn our back to it or um, it's going to be considered contaminated. So now we're ready to open our sterile field. So, we can get it out of its package. The first flap is always away from us so that we don't reach over our field. You also have to make sure that the field is not dangling from the table because it will contaminate. So now, before the last flap, there is a tweezer. So you want to grab onto it before you open that last flap this way. Keep in mind again that the one inch border of your field is considered contaminated. So you cannot put any material within that one inch border. The first thing on your kit is an extra sterile drape. So again, you can grab within the one inch border. The tweezer, the tip, it has to be more than one inch inside to keep sterile. And this field, you're going to put it in between the patient's leg so that you have room to put your container. The next item in your kit is your fenestrated drape. So this one, you can put it around the patient's genitalia to give you extra protection. Again, the one inch border is still considered contaminated, so ensure to touch only that one inch border. Now, you have a garbage bag that's available for you to discard uh, your swabs uh, later on. So you can open it and put it on the side so that it's easier to reach. Like this. The last item is your Foley catheter that you need to put inside of your sterile field. So you're gonna open your package and put it in your field in a sterile manner. Perfect. 
you have to make sure that it is within the one inch border of your field. So now that our kit is ready, we're ready for our sterile glove. In this case, uh, I'm gonna move my table a little bit so I can stay close to my patient. Again, make sure that if you do turn your table, that your kit does not get contaminated. So I'm gonna put on my sterile gloves. Make sure to take the time to really unfold the packaging as it's gonna make your life much easier while you put your gloves on. And also make sure that you don't contaminate your field as you open your gloves. So, this way. So I'm gonna put the first glove. I grab only the inner cuff of my glove. You can take a step back. And the gloves must remain higher than waist level to remain sterile. And for the second glove, you can slide your hand inside of the cuff, again, to keep it from getting contaminated. So now you have on your sterile gloves. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna finish preparing our material. So I'm gonna open my catheter. Put it in my field. This I don't need. I'm gonna open the packages to disinfect. I'm gonna open my lubricant and dip it, well, dip my Foley into it so it is lubricated. And then I'm gonna put it in the little notch in my container. And I'm also going to attach my 10 cc syringe to inflate my balloon. That way. So now all of my material is ready and I'm ready to start my procedure. So I am going to grab my container and bring it in between the patient's legs. So now we need to do disinfection. So your non-dominant hand is gonna grasp the penis. Now this hand is contaminated, so it cannot touch any sterile material. If your patient was not circumcised, you need to retract the foreskin. Now to disinfect, you're gonna take one swab stick and with circular motion starting at the meters, you're gonna disinfect all the way down at least three times. So one swab, one motion. So one swab stick starting at the meatus, circular motion going downward. And a third time. This way. So now you're ready for insertion. So you're gonna t ask your patient to take a deep breath and you're gonna insert the catheter upon expiration. So one, two, three, and you're gonna insert until you see urine return and ensure that the tip of your catheter is inside of your container. Once you have urine return, you're gonna continue inserting the catheter until the Y bifurcation. And then you're gonna let the bladder empty. Once the urine stops to flow, you will insert, you will inflate your balloon. So you can let go of the penis. You're gonna grab onto the bifurcation and slowly inflate your balloon. At any point, if the patient feels pain or if there's resistance, you must stop and continue inserting the catheter. So you must inflate the balloon according to what's written on the ring of the catheter. So in this case, it's 10 milliliter. Once it is inflated, you're gonna pull a little bit until resistance and push it back slightly. Now, you are ready to connect your urine bag. So, you're gonna remove the cap of your urine bag and connect it directly into your catheter avoiding touching both ends, so both the end of the catheter and the end of the urine bag. So 
So now your system is closed. So you do not need to be sterile anymore. So you can start removing your material. You're gonna rip your field. Remove any extra lubricant that would be on your patient. You can cover them while you secure the catheter to the patient's tie. So now you're ready to secure it to your patient's tie. So you can either use a stat lock or hip fix. For the stat lock, you're gonna use the skin prep first so that the device is gonna stick better to the patient's skin and it's also gonna protect the skin from injury. So you apply it and then you're gonna let it completely dry for at least uh, 60 seconds. So once it is dry, you're gonna apply it on the patient's skin making sure that it is well uh, attached. So now that it is secure, you can put the catheter through it and click it into place. So now we're done with the procedure. You're gonna make sure to discard all of the material and put the patient back in a comfortable position. Don't forget about the side rail, especially if you have to leave the patient's bedside. I'm going to discard of everything. Remove the gloves. Perform hand hygiene. And cover the patient. So now we're going to show the same procedure, but on a female patient. The position of the patient is slightly different, so we bring the heels closer to open up the hips and give us better access. So we're going to start with disinfection. So I'm going to use my non-dominant hand to spread the labia. Once we touch the patient again, that hand is considered contaminated, and once we start cleaning, we can't let go of the labia because they will contaminate themselves if you are in the process of cleaning them. So we open the labia and that hands stay there for the whole duration of the procedure. So for the disinfection, we're gonna need five swabs. So the first swab is gonna be labia majora from top to bottom on one side, then labia majora on the other side, we're then going to do labia minora from top to bottom on one side, labia minora on the other side, and the last swab is going to be on the meatus and downward. So now we're ready to insert our catheter. So we're going to take, ask our patient to take a deep breath and we're going to insert upon expiration. So one, two, three. We go in until we see urine return. Once we see urine return, we continue for at least five centimeters or until the Y bifurcation. We're gonna let the tip of the catheter inside of the container until the bladder empties completely. Now, once it's empty, we can grab the catheter and inflate the balloon. Now, if there is any resistance or if the patient feels pain, we stop right away and push the catheter a bit more. So we're inflating the balloon according to the volume that's written on the ring of the catheter. So now my balloon is inflated. I'm gonna pull slightly until resistance and I'm gonna push it back. Now I'm ready to connect my drainage bag. So I'm gonna remove the cap, keep it sterile and connect both extremities. This way. So now we can remove our material, remove the drapes. We're gonna wipe any extra lubricant that would be on the patient, reposition them and cover them. 
We're now ready to fix the catheter to the patient's tie. I'm now going to show you how to do that with HIPAFIX. So you're going to put a first piece of HIPAFIX on the patient's tie close to the site, this way. And the second one, you're going to fix it on the catheter itself and not on the collection bag. like so. Make sure that it is well secure to prevent accidental uh, removal. And then you're going to cover your patient, discard all of your material, bring the side rail up, bring the patient's head up, You're going to discard all of your material, including your gloves, and proceed with hand hygiene. Thank you for watching this video.